Right, we're going to talk a little bit today about the gear that you need to go fishing and you know need is a funny word a lot of people have an awful lot of gear I like to think of myself as a minimalist and get by with as least gear as possible but some things you need to be comfortable in cold water is you're going to need a pair of, of waders this happens to be a chest wader and you can see it comes all the way up to my chest and uh, you know these are breathable they are uh, got neoprene you know, booties, and you, we we were fishing in these these uh, last winter in nine degrees, and the lines are freezing up, and everything's freezing up, and we're in and out of the water, and for the most part, we were pretty warm. But uh, you know, in warm weather, you don't necessarily need these. And this little canyon today, with the with the runoff that we've got, is you know, this water was 24 hours ago, it was ice, and it hasn't warmed up a whole lot yet. So you can get a a good pair of chest waders like this. You know pair of wading boots these just have to have felt bottoms on them so they give you pretty good traction on the slickest rocks I don't know if you've ever tried to walk across rocks with moss on them but it can be fairly treacherous and uh, this doesn't take away all the danger but it, it helps and so a good pair they got a lot of support in these in these wading boots and they got the felt bottoms on them and uh, I wouldn't wait anywhere without good foot protection anymore there's too many people throw too many bottles and there's too much broken glass so you need good foot protection when you're in the stream. Okay, this is a small stream but it's got some deep holes in it and uh, I think it's probably better to use the, the uh, chest waders. Uh, why? Because if you take the, if you take the hip, hip waders and you, you, you get to a spot where you have to go through and it's a little bit deeper than the hip waders, you have to you can't go through there. So in a in a brushy stream like this, we like to stay in the stream. So I think it's better in cold weather to, to, to have the uh, the chest waders. Now if we were in a little headwater stream that doesn't have deep pools, then of course you'd use the you'd use the hip waders. By the way, it's good to have the felt soles on the bottom of the hip waders or your or your or your chest sweaters. Of course with the chest sweaters we use a boot. We add a boot to it. It has a it has a felt bottom and so forth. This may seem like overkill, but you get in a hole that's is just about too deep for your hip waders and you go in, which I have done, then you got a then you got a leg full of, of, of water and uh, it's no it ruins it, it ruins your day. In the summertime, wait wet we don't care. Okay. I've been a guide for a few years, and a lot of people come and they, they want to put waders on them. They get the waders out, and then they start, they put them on, but then, then they try to put their street shoes on. Obviously, a lot of people don't know what waders are for. So let me show you basically how an old man that's done this a few times does it. Okay. I like my, I'm here with my Subaru, so I sit on the tailgate. I've got a, got a mat here. Got that at a yard sale. That's a handy thing to do. That way I don't get, get my feet in the mud or something if I'm outdoors, or I don't get gravel or something now. One thing it's good to do is to take your socks up around around your pants like that. If you don't, when you put the waders on, you get that. Excuse my ugly leg. And that's cold and uncomfortable. So that's a that's a handy way to do it. I've seen I've seen little Velcro straps and stuff that you can do like that to hold your pants down, but, but that works good, okay? So I'm sitting here, really hard to put them on standing up. I'm not gonna, I, I could probably do it, but it may be not. So I'm sitting here, try to keep my boots out of the mud in case it's muddy. And it's, it's, it's a giant waterproof sock. That's what it is, okay? That's what it is.
Next thing you do, stand up, get it more comfortable. Then you get your boots on. Be sure you're unlaced a bit so you can get them on. There's different kinds of boots and different kinds of attachments. This is pretty basic. Got that? Now, a lot of people, they just, at this point, they go ahead and lace it up. Well, they don't know what this black thing is. This is a, this is like a gravel, it's a gravel guard. If you're a skier, it's like a, it's like a, a gator, a snow gator. So you just lace it up. I like to try a, tie a square knot so it doesn't come loose. And you pull the, pull the gravel guard down. That little hook here, you hook it on there, and then, and then of course you do the other one. Okay, so I've got my waders on. You know, over the years I've watched a lot of people put waders on that didn't, that never worn waders before. And some interesting things, that they, I showed you the thing about having, taking care of your, the bottom of your pants cuffs and so forth. Sometimes people, Come and they want to wear shorts. It's summertime, they're wearing shorts, it's hot weather. And they put the waders on with shorts and then they have these little funky little little ankle socks. Well, they wade into the water and the water is ice cold almost. And they're 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 they're, they're chilled out. I'm not chilled out, they're freezing in a half hour or more. So if you're gonna wade in cold water with waders, you need to have layers underneath, you know fleece pants or something. Jeans is not, or isn't good because it's cotton. Okay, so It needs to be something that, that has a little bit of insulation. If you have to, you have to, but at least, at least wear long pants and at least have long socks. Okay, they don't have to be, doesn't have to be anything fancy, but just, just remember that you'll, you'll be much more comfortable if you're, if you're wading in the west in a, in, in a deep cold trout stream. All right, now, I'm back. That was that was a short fishing trip. Okay, let me show you how to take the boots off. Now that seems like a simple thing, and it is. A lot better if you can sit down. A little hard to get that. A little hard to get that off. After you've waited, things are things are wet, and, and it's easy. As a matter of fact, your boots get a little bit a little bit looser when they're wet. So you need to you need to be sure you have them nice and tight when you put them on. So we're sitting here, then lace down at about that point, and uh, get it off like that, and then you come along. And you just, I like to put the gator back down, a little easier. And then you pull to get it off. If you can't get it off, you have somebody help you pull it off, and try not to get pulled off into the out of, off the seat. All right, thank you, Dan. Okay. So that's that's it. Now, if if we'd have actually gone waiting, it would have been easier to take off. But suffice to say, you may you may need help. <laughs>